This is one in a series of presentations intended to teach healthcare professionals, volunteers, and others how to operate pre-programmed amateur radio equipment provided by the San Joaquin County EMS Agency. It is intended to provide basic how-to information and is not a full course in radio operation. Welcome to this radio operation course. Its purpose is to teach you how to operate the amateur radio equipment that you'll be using at your healthcare facility. This course takes less than 11 minutes to complete and is intended for both pre-need and just-in-time radio training. This presentation covers the Kenwood PM-D710A amateur radio transceiver. This is a dual-band transmitter receiver or transceiver that operates on VHF and UHF amateur radio frequencies. In normal times, you must have an amateur radio license to operate this radio. However, unlicensed person may operate provided a licensed ham is on hand as a control operator. Note that in an emergency, you do not need a license to operate this radio. This course will familiarize you with the most basic functions of the amateur radio equipment. You will learn only the essential controls necessary to operate the radio. You will learn how to turn the radio on and off, how to set the volume and squelch controls, and how to select the proper memory channel for use during an exercise or during an emergency. Step one is to make sure the radio is ready for use. First, look at the back of the radio and make sure an antenna cable is attached to the radio's antenna connector. Operating the radio without an antenna attached will not allow you to transmit and is likely to destroy the transmitter. Make sure that the radio is connected to the power supply and that the power supply is connected to a wall outlet. Now is a good time to make sure you have at least one pad of writing paper, several pens and pencils, and that a clock is also available. Your radio requires 12 volt DC power to operate. It is provided by a separate power supply. When the power supply is turned on, its on-off switch may be lit. If you wish to follow along and the power supply is not already turned on, press the switch on the front panel to turn the power supply on at this time. However, the power supply should be turned off when the radio is not in use. Next, we'll adjust the radio and then we'll turn it on. There are two important controls. The volume control behaves as you'd expect and controls the sound. The squelch control quiets static when there is no signal present. Now find the volume and squelch controls and turn the left volume and squelch controls each to the 9 o'clock position. Left volume and squelch controls to the 9 o'clock position. This sets the volume and squelch on the left side of the radio. Next turn the right volume control fully counterclockwise. The right squelch control should be turned fully clockwise. Fully counterclockwise for the volume control, fully clockwise for the squelch control. These settings silence the right side of the radio. With the volume and squelch adjusted, press the power on off button. The radio display should now light up. If it does not, check the power supply and make sure that it's turned on. This radio has two separate receivers and this can cause confusion. There is a left receiver and a right receiver and you can listen to both at the same time. That's why there are separate left and right volume and squelch controls. You must select the transmit band before transmitting, either the left side or the right side. We normally use only the left side of the radio. Select the left band by pressing the left volume control knob. Note that the PTT icon lights up on the side that is set to transmit. This should be the left side. PTT stands for push to talk and again designates the band or side of the radio that you'll be transmitting on. There are two ways to select the frequency you'll use. One is a traditional tuner called VFO mode in amateur radio that changes the frequency as you turn the tuning knob. This is much the same as selecting a new frequency by turning the dial on your automobile radio. It's called VFO mode. The radio also contains pre-programmed memory channels, each of which has its own channel number and channel name. Use the MR key to select memory mode on the radio. This is very important and is often a cause of confusion. To select memory mode, press the MR button on the radio. This should cause a channel name and memory channel number to appear on the display. We use memory channels to make it easier to find the proper channel to use. 
Without memory channels, there are literally thousands of frequencies on which communication might be taking place. With memory channels, we have programmed your radio with all the channels that we might use during an emergency. They're already in the radio. These are the same channels used during drills and exercises and for normal amateur radio communication. Each memory channel has both a channel number and a channel name. The names won't make any sense to you. They're tactical names selected for use in an organized and widely used plan such as ours. The primary channels we use are SJC1 through SJC15. Getting the radio into the proper channel is the biggest challenge facing most users. You must be on the same channel as everyone you wish to communicate with. All healthcare facility radios have been pre-programmed with the amateur radio channels used in San Joaquin County. All of the facility radios are programmed alike. Many personally owned radios are also programmed using this channel plan. If you own an amateur radio, we can arrange to program it so it matches all these other radios, making it easier to use. You should only use memory mode as described here. Note that memory mode shows a channel name and memory channel number on the display. In VFO mode, only a frequency number is displayed as shown here. In memory mode, channels are selected by rotating the tuning knob, and it's now time to select the proper channel for use. Most of the time we use channel 22, labeled SJC2, for our operations. This would include emergencies, non-emergencies, drills, and exercises. If in doubt, always start on channel 22, SJC2. If that channel is unavailable or fails while we're using it, we'll immediately switch to channel 24, SJC4. Our second backup channel is channel 23, SJC3. This is what the radio looks like when properly adjusted and set to memory channel 22, SJC2, which is our primary channel. Note that the PTT icon appears on the left side of the radio, showing that we're ready to transmit on our selected channel. Here are some tips for using amateur radio. First, use plain language, and if you don't understand something, ask. No radio talk or CB jargon should be used during emergencies or during drills. When one station finishes speaking and releases the push to talk switch, you'll usually hear some sort of a beep that's called a courtesy tone. That indicates the station has completed its transmission and someone else may begin. The best way to learn about ham radio is by listening to it. But don't be mic shy. Hams are a friendly group and they want to talk with you. Mistakes are expected. SJC2 channel 22, which we call the Tracy repeater on the air, is a good place to start your amateur radio adventure. If the power supply does not turn on, it's either the cord is unplugged or the fuse has blown. If the radio does not turn on, it's probably the power supply is off or the radio was not turned on properly. Try holding the off-on switch a little bit longer. If the radio is on but you don't hear anything, the volume control may be too low. You might find yourself on the wrong channel, or if you hear continuous static, adjust the squelch control. If you need help, ask another ham or one of us for assistance. Here's a summary of what we've learned in this presentation. These are the most important eight points. Obviously, the radio must be on, and doing that requires the power supply being turned on first. You must be in memory mode, where you see channel names and channel numbers rather than frequencies. In memory mode, select the proper channel. Usually, this will be channel 22, named SJC2, but other channels may be used instead. This concludes this presentation on how to get your radio turned on and on to the proper channel so you can begin communicating. Amateur radio is not just for emergency communications. In fact, emergencies are one of the smaller activities involving ham radio. Your license opens up a world of activities that include talking around the world, talking to orbiting satellites and to the International Space Station, participating in weekly radio contests, or doing do-it-yourself projects, and many other fun activities. There are four amateur radio clubs in San Joaquin County, and each holds an on-the-air training net each week that you're invited to participate in. For more information, visit n5fdl.com for details. Thank you for your interest in this presentation. If you have any questions about the content or comments about the presentation, please contact either of us.